In the past, I've looked at individual sports games on this channel to see how they hold up under a modern day microscope. Not only that, but also how they compare to today's product, what they do worse, and occasionally what they do better. Today, we're taking that to the next level. Rather than just looking at what a game had to offer, we're now going to compare it directly to its competition. From 2000 to 2009, EA and 2K continued their head-to-head -head competition in the sports realm. While battles on the court, the diamond and the gridiron raged on at the same time, it's the battle for the virtual ice that we're gonna cover in this series. 10 video games, 10 episodes, and a lot of questions to answer what game had the better graphics, the better gameplay? Has EA gotten lazy with their innovations or simply gotten too close to the limit of what's possible with modern tech? Was 2K truly a bad series? Did it deserve to go under, leaving us with no major competition in the hockey video game markets? In this series, we're gonna find out. And more specifically, in this episode, we take a look at 2K's first ever offering. It's NHL 2K for the Sega Dreamcast going head-to-head -head with EA NHL 2001. The battle for the ice is underway. This, this is the Cold War. In each episode of the series, we are going to compare each game in five different categories to decide a winner for the episode. Gameplay, presentation, franchise mode, other modes, and year-to-year -year improvement. Although in this first episode, we'll be having graphics count as its own separate category, of course, due to 2K not having a prior title to look at. And that's really the key thing to be looking at in this episode. This is the first NHL 2K title, and it's going up against what was and still is the king of its domain in EA NHL. Now, the Dreamcast featured a lineup that, in theory, could appeal to everyone, no matter what your genre of interest happened to be. NHL 2K being introduced was a part of the continued push from Sega to make the Dreamcast the home console of choice for sports gamers, which, in hindsight, not a terrible idea, especially given the online capabilities of the Dreamcast. Now, by the time NHL 2K released in North America on February 9th of 2000, the console already boasted exclusive titles for the NFL and the NBA, along with other titles that were available on other consoles, such as NFL Blitz 2000, Ready to Rumble Boxing, and Jeremy McGrath Supercross 2000, a personal favorite of mine back in the day. But how were the exclusive titles received? Quite well is the answer. As you can see, the first installment for both the NFL and NBA titles received really good reviews, especially compared to their already established competition from EA with the Madden and NBA Live series. But what about NHL? Honestly, not bad either. A couple of decent scores rather than good, but still a solid first impression when you're going up against NHL 2001, it's an uphill battle. Knowing how the games compare in terms of review scores at the time, let's see how both games hold up, both individually and against one another. And we're kicking things off with the gameplay category. For their first outing, I think they knocked it out of the park with NHL 2K1. Now, there isn't anything particularly special about the gameplay. It's just a solid all-around product, especially for the time, but even now, it holds up. 2K had something EA didn't though, a shot blocking button of all things, as well as a dedicated deflection button when playing with friends, something I've been begging for from the modern EA series for years now. NHL 2001, on the other hand, it's exactly what you would expect from an EA title at the time. Fast, hard-hitting gameplay with a simplistic control scheme, and it led to a really fun game, and admittedly, the head start didn't go to waste. The gameplay flows better than 2K due to better puck physics, collision detection, and pickup animations. 2K put up one hell of a fight in this category, but there are some mountains that you're just not going to conquer on your first attempt, and this was one of them. The point goes to NHL 2001. Up next, presentation. Now in this category, we'll be comparing the in-game presentation, the menus, the music, and anything else that goes into bringing the game to life. Now for NHL 2K1, the menus are fine. The soundtrack, well, there isn't one, generic music only. 
The in-game presentation is simplistic, but it does get the job done. You have the likes of pre-game anthems and Bob Cole on commentary oh, baby. to really give the gameplay a unique feel. It's pretty good stuff across the board. Then we get to NHL 2001. The menus are a lot more clean and simplistic, although we see a lack of a soundtrack here too. In game, again, player intros, but more than that, we see the walk from the locker room and onto the ice. Provides a little bit more immersion in the simple fireworks display that we see in 2K. The anthems are there as well. Why EA ever got rid of the you know pre-game anthems? I have no idea. It adds so much to the presentation. And countering Bob Cole on commentary is Jim Howitzer Hewson. Seaman in alone. And you get a little bit more interaction with players in between the play as well. That really brings the game to life. Yet again, a strong debut effort for 2K, but the head start that EA had pays off, and they take the presentation category as well. Up next, we have the franchise section. Now, why is franchise mode a section? Well, two reasons. One, franchise mode was, is, and always will be the staple of every sports video game. And two, well, obviously, it's my favorite game mode. Now, here's the problem, though. NHL 2K, there's no real franchise mode to speak of. You have a choice of a single season sim or playoff mode. There is no long-term option. For NHL 2001, well, it's the same thing. There's just a season mode, and comparing the two is just kind of mad. There's not a ton to talk about here. This specific battle, though, will heat up over the years. For now, though, I have to call it a draw, opening up the gates for a potential comeback for 2K to, at the very least, earn a tie. And the other mode category, which would be party modes, be a pro, tournament mode, etc., we see a very, very close battle. Now, 2K boasts playoff mode, and that's it. The game provides the bare minimum in terms of modes that you would expect to see from a hockey game at that time. And NHL 2001 sees a playoff mode, but at the very least, tournament mode and a shootout mode as well so it's not exactly a slugfest to the finish on this one nhl 2001 wins by the slimmest of margins in a very unimpressive head-to-head -head. and heading into our final category ea has already secured the win as a result of that last category as you didn't really expect for a game in a series that's had a significant head start the question now becomes whether or not 2k can secure a single w in this first head-to-head -head. so let's talk about graphics and nhl 2k1 it's it's okay obviously with a modern view they're rough but even at the time i wouldn't say they were anything special they're comparable to what you would have seen on the playstation with other hockey titles if not a little bit better maybe somewhere nestled in the middle ground of ps1 era graphics and low-end graphics for early ps2 hockey games like we'd see with the nhl face-off series nhl 2001 the head start for EA pays off here again as well. Player models are less blocky. The faces have a little bit more detail. The look of the ice in the arena, pretty much everything is better. So yet again, it's a win for EA, bringing the total to four wins and one draw in favor of EA and NHL 2001. Overall, NHL 2K's first outing was solid, as mentioned, but also, as mentioned, getting a victory here was a nearly impossible task. That said, as you may have seen in the 2K10 review on this channel, my most viewed video on this channel at the time of recording, this may not go down as a completely one-sided battle, even if 2K eventually backed out of the competition you know both series would go in very interesting and at times different directions over the next decade and i look forward to showcasing each series and what they had to offer for better or worse throughout this series i look forward to hearing from you guys in the comments there's certainly a lot to discuss and throughout this series we'll have a little bit more to sink our teeth into in terms of talking about each game I want to mention as well, if you haven't checked out the description, feel free to do so. If you haven't already, there's links to all of my socials, Twitter, Discord, Instagram, etc. The Teespring store for random shirts, uh, the Patreon, which grants you access to videos early, including the rest of this series and other exclusive content. The link to the roster editing doc for NHL 21 is there. Everything you could ever need is mentioned. And of course, make sure to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already done so to help out this channel. For now... This battle is over. The Cold War rages on.